falls to me to be the first words of the night. How do you prepare for what to say at this moment? Uh, no, I'm not going to cry. I'll be strong. I'll be strong tonight. No, I will cry, of course. Um, out, of, out of complete and utter pride. Um, we're, we're completely spoiled tonight. Um, some of you may know that we have an opening act as well. And these two young ladies are just incredible talent, incredible homegrown talent right here on the, through these walls and around this whole, this whole area. Their, um, their music, I, I have known them for probably at least more than a decade. Um, and I've seen their, their talent just grow and grow um, under the tutelage of the guy that'll be sitting here and many, many other people in this room. Um, they're really, really special young people you're going to see tonight. And I have the greatest of pleasures of welcoming you here tonight and of welcoming Ava, Carmen and Brian Miller to the stage. So please give them the warmest welcome. This is the Taking Flight Collective. Now, while, whilst they're getting settled, I'll tell you a little bit. The Taking Flight Collective is, this is the second iteration of that particular um, project, I suppose. And it really was to foster the um, further education of these students in, their, in developing their music. They're transitioning out of high school into college. One of them already has. <laughs> and uh, I think many instructors within the school, but none more than this man right here, have taken them under their wing and really produced an incredible lineup of music. So here we go. Best of luck and enjoy. playing a set of reels that I learned from a band called Lunasa 
and um, I, well, I learned it from a flute player named Kevin Crawford, and he's one of my favorite flute players. Um, and these reels are called Island Patty. Next we're going to be playing a set of mazurkas and this one's actually special to us because we actually learned the first tune in uh, the ensemble that we used to be a part of called the Advanced Youth Ensemble which is one of the ensembles at the Center for Irish Musics where we take lessons and we played this tune with Adrian back in ensemble and um, I just want to say we're so excited to be opening for her and um, this concert's about to be amazing so I'm so excited to listen to it. <laughs> You have to listen to us first, so. <laughs>
next I'll be playing a set of tunes that I learned over COVID. <laughs> yeah. So during COVID, my teacher Nora told me to go down a YouTube dive of Irish musicians. And I was like, I'm all for it because I have nothing to do during COVID right now. And um, I ran across this recording of an uh, amazing flute player named Nula Kennedy. And she was playing this set of jigs um, with no tune names. So if anyone knows the names to these, I would love to hear them. But I've just been calling this set the Australian set. So. <laughs>
gonna finish off with a set of reels that um, <laughs> I learned from YouTube, and <laughs> and um, I saw this video of Joni Madden, who's an awesome whistle and flute player, and I had to learn them. So then I made Carmen learn them, and um, <laughs> um, and I just wanted to say thank you so much, Adrian, for letting us play for your opening, and we love you, and we can't wait to hear your CD, and I'm gonna listen to it on the way home while I drive. <laughs> Sagarol for Carm Pascarella and the indescribable Brian Miller. This capo is still smoking hot. There we go. Right. A little, uh, woo -hoo. So a little bit of, uh, we're going to take about a three to five minute pause. If you have a seat next to you, please invite someone to come sit in it. There's still people standing in the back, so if you would, uh, if you would be so kind, either move in and uh, offer someone a seat on the end. We're sold out, so um, thank you so much. See. Right, we get ourselves settled here a little bit. I think you 
you know, I think you know who this young lady next to me is. <laughs> Apparently she's popular, I don't know. Um, an incredible pleasure to be up here with, uh, with Brian Miller to, uh, to get this underway. Um, any of you who come here frequently, you will know that you frequently see Brian Miller. And this is a good thing. This is a really good thing. And uh, we're, we're blessed to have him. Um, he's a huge part of the making of this album. And uh, I will let Adrian explain more of that to you. But here we are, Adrian O'Shea. Oh, thanks, everybody. So thank you so much for being here. This is the release of my very first album called Threads of Gold. And I was really lucky to make it with, mostly with the wonderful man here, Brian Miller. And then it was produced by Danny Diamond, who's somewhere in the room. Big shout out to Danny. <laughs> And I'm really, really happy to be in this room, right here with all of you, releasing it. So this is very exciting for me. I've spent a lot of time listening to music in this room and playing music in this room, but it's really fun to be, for it to be my gig. And for me to be up here with my dad and with Brian, and I'm feeling very, very lucky. So the first song I'm gonna sing, may as well start off with the most popular folk ballad pretty much ever ever sung anywhere, and it's Barbara Allen. And this is a record, this is um, Jean Ritchie's version, who is a wonderful Appalachian singer. And I was digging through YouTube. You heard YouTube a lot from the others. Um, that is where most traditional music is housed these days, is in, in, in the files of YouTube. And the, the YouTube is the Irish musician's greatest resource. Don't, don't listen to anything else. But, um, and I came across this recording of, of her singing it, and I was just blown away. And I think I sent it to Brian that night or the next day, and I asked if he would help me come up with an arrangement for it. Um, so, we're going to kick off with Barbara Allen. I 
shake my health to the ladies all around, but not to Barbara Allen. He turned his pale face to the wall, for death was on him dwelling. I do what you good neighbors are, I do sweet Barbara Allen. She was gone across the fields. She heard those death bells and knelling, and every stroke the death bell gave. Hard hearted Barbara Allen. Oh, mother, oh, mother, go make my bed. Go make it both long. I'll die for him tomorrow. And she was buried near the old church tower. And he was buried all night. And out of his bosom grew red, red rose. Out of Barbary's grew a green briar. They grew and they grew up to the old church tower. Until they could grow no higher They locked in tight in a troop of her snot Red rose around the green briar Thank you all very, very much. So the next song I'm going to sing, I actually learned right here through the wonderful Center for Irish Music. I was really, really lucky Woo! to have grown up in the Center for Irish Music pretty much my entire life. My entire life. And I'm, I'm a really, really lucky recipient of a lot of hours of, of teaching and care and time from lots and lots of people in this room and outside of this room. But I learned this song during MIM, which is Minnesota Irish Music Weekend, which was last weekend. But I learned this a couple years ago from the wonderful Brian O'Hart, who's come in to teach. And it's an immigration song, and they're very near and dear to my heart. Um, I immigrated as a very tiny baby with my parents to Minnesota, and it's my favorite place to be. Minnesota is up St. Paul. So, um, but I thought what, was, what I thought was so interesting about this song was it's an immigration song from the perspective of the woman being left behind. And those are kind of rare. Most immigration songs, when you start to look at them, it's all kind of told through the perspective of men. And so that, that kind of stood out to me about this song. She's talking about this young man leaving her, but it's from her point of view and, and her emotions. And that was a really important thing for me when recording this. And it's a really beautiful song. And we're going to continue with it. And it's called Edward Boyle. My 
charming Edward boy His friends and relations They did him then convey To Belfast town of high renown Until he reached the cave And with courage bold he did set sail And he left that shamrock shore All joys be with you, Edward Boyle Will I ever see the county of Fermanagh, in the parish of Rasley, in the lands of Brody, in the mountains of Trory Bay, brought up by honest parents, who did together toy, but you now sunk in sorrows for the loss of their red boy. Country has grown lonesome since young Edward he went away. He was the pride of the college land, how sweet his flute could play. His comrades, all both great and small, they swore they'd leave the soil. Sure, they would meet with young Edward Boyle. My curse on you, Columbus, twas you found out the way. And likewise to America, that is stolen my love away. From that time, don't you? Hardship, grief, and toil to lament and mourn for our love's return, like I for young Edward Boyle. Now to conclude and finish, young men and maids be true. Let you never part for riches great. As some false lovers do For if I possessed of this universe St. Patrick's blessed I I'd part it all And ten times more For one glimpse of you, Edward Boy Right, I'm going to give the hardest working man in the Celtic Junction a break. And I'm going to sing a song um, unaccompanied by myself. So as many of you know, as I hope you would know, I was away in Limerick this last year. So I moved over there to get my master's degree at the University of Limerick. And I've just come back home, which I'm, I'm very happy about. But one of the wonderful things I got to do over there was I spent a lot of time with artists one-on-one. -on -one. I would get the whole day with these amazing singers and collectors just to sit and speak to them and pick their brains and get songs off of them and talk to them about whatever they were willing to put up with me asking them about. And one of those wonderful days that I got to spend with, was with the wonderful song monger, as he calls himself, Len Graham. And this is a song 
kind of attributed that he had collected um, that I had learned and I, I talked to him about it while I was over there and it was a really wonderful day and really special getting to talk about um, how traditional songs kind of pass through people. So this song would have come from a man named Joe Holmes and he said he learned it from his mother and beyond that we kind of don't know, we only know these person-to-person -person stories and Joe Holmes taught it to Len Graham and Len Graham taught it to Brian O'Hart who I mentioned before and Brian O'Hart is who I got this song off of and I love talking about those kind of threads and those strings that connect songs and kind of make their way all the way to here in the middle of the United States in St. Paul, Minnesota that I'm singing this song that comes from very, very far away in the north of Ireland that would have been sung by a very, very different person many, many years ago. But the other really fun thing about this song is that it's a body song and it's, it's, a, it's a warning song which are very, very common in traditional music and I think they're there um, for good reason. And it warns against, um, the song is called Tumbling Through the Hay. It's very, very, very subtle what the warning is about. But um, it's been one of my favorite songs to sing, uh, and so I'm going to sing it here for you all. <clears throat> it been in the month of July, in a rosy time of the year, down by on flowery meadows where the water does run clear. Where the lambs and little fishes, they do merrily sport and play, and the lads and the lasses go a tumbling through the hay. La da dee die dee totally, la da dee die, la da dee die, la da dee die dee totally. Then up comes lovely Johnny with a pitchfork and a rake, and up comes lovely Molly, the haven for to make. Totally, la da dee die, la da dee die, la da dee die, dee totally. Then up come the mowers, the hay for to cut down, with their sights upon their shoulders and their hair a lovely brown. And then up come the laborers, the hay for to shake out, and when they had it all cut down, they tossed it all about. La da dee die, dee totally. La da dee die, la da dee die, la da dee die, dee totally. It been coming up to Saturday when all would get their pay. I and all these jolly haymakers were feeling blithe and gay. Ah, then a mare of these haymakers, as near as I can say, were five and twenty boys and girls a tumbling through the hay. La da dee die, dee totally. La da dee die, la da dee die, la da dee die, dee totally. When nine short months were over and all was past and gone, there were five and twenty boys and girls a making their sad moan. Singing hush the bubby, these fair maids they did say, and many's a time they wished they ne'er had tossed about the hay. La da dee die dee totally, la da dee die, la da dee die, la da dee die dee totally. Oh la da dee die dee totally, la da dee die, la da dee die, la da dee die dee totally. very fun to sing that in front of my grandparents and my whole family. <laughs> I'm having to close my eyes. So I'm actually going to invite a really special person up here if Thahi Sproul is standing by somewhere near. Woo. I've been really, really fortunate to know Thahi most of my life and to spend a lot of time sitting at his feet or tugging at his sleeve for songs or to sing with me or I spend a lot of really wonderful time in his house singing songs or on the floor. That's, that's coming! You're giving away my punchline. <laughs> um, but there was one very special night, I think it was about 
eight or nine years old, and it was the depth of a Minnesota winter, and we were having a session at Dahi's house. And I wasn't quite big enough to be playing, and what happened was there was a huge ice storm that came through, black ice storm, and it shut everybody in the house. There was no way you were, the car was not going to make it up the street. You were not going to make it out of the house, let alone down the steps. So we all hunkered down and listened to music. But it got to a late enough point where I was too tired to kind of sit up and be proper company. But I didn't want to go into one of the back rooms and go to sleep. That's where my, my younger siblings were. So my solution to this was to find the one place where I couldn't be stepped on, where I could still listen to everything and be in the middle of it. And there's a great picture, I think, courtesy of Emily Flagstead, of me sleeping underneath Dahi's kitchen table. And it's about 3, 2, 3 a.m. at this point. I'm passed out underneath. And it was a, it's a very happy memory to me. You could have used that for the front of your CD. I right? could have. <laughs> I could have. There's going to be a bonus edition where you get very embarrassing childhood photos of me added in. Uh, but this is a wonderful song that I learned from Dahi probably just a couple years after that when I was 11 or 12. And I've been really, really lucky to sing it with him many times since. And it's a beautiful song in Irish called In the Shunrawa. And it's, a, it's an Ashling. It's talking about, it's really quite positive. There's no kind of death or dying in this song. It's pretty happy. Um, but it's just, it's a really beautiful melody and a really beautiful song in Irish. And I'm really lucky to have Dahi up here to sing it and play with me. So I hope you enjoy.
Brian has an instrument forest up here that you have to navigate in and out of because he has so many instruments. So I'm going to ask Brian and then also a really good friend of mine, Joe, to come up and we're going to play a set of tunes, hopefully, if those people are here and willing to come back up on stage with me. So I'm, I've spent a lot of time singing in the last year, but I am actually a flute player as well, I would like to believe. Oh. Is Joe anywhere to be found? I'm looking for him. That's not the first time, and it's not the last time, that we've been looking for Joe. So I was, I was really lucky to grow up and spend a lot of time as a teenager playing with Joe and our other friend Ian. We did Kaylee bands and group of kills together. We traveled to Ireland together. And we were the first Taking Flight Collective. Of, speaking of those wonderful women who opened up. Woo! So it was very, very happy for me to have them be opening and, and to play before me. And I'm very, very proud. And I would like to think that I was still just out of college and young and very cute like that. But I have a master's degree now, so I have to be a little bit more mature. Unfortunately, but um, uh, we're gonna play a set of tunes. So Joe and Ian recorded a beautiful album, a beautiful tune album, two years ago, one year ago. I think we were, they recorded it two years ago. It's been out for out for a year, and it's called Star of the North, and it's got some beautiful tunes from the two of them. But I was lucky enough to record a set of tunes with Joe here on an E flat. So I have an E flat body on this flute, so there's gonna be a little bit of tuning. If you can all brace. And Joe is uh, his fiddle tuned to E flat, and they're they're great fiddle and flute tunes. I hope. What could go wrong? Yeah, what could go wrong? But, Coincidentally, um, I'm tuned to D, so we're just gonna. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll just lash into it, and do you uh... <laughs> might want to leave for a while. No, oh, it'll be it'll be great. It was great um, working with Joe and Ian and Adrian in Taking Flight uh, version number one. And um, we had the unfortunate circumstances of a lot of it having to be online uh, at that time. But uh, we were able to get together a bunch in my backyard. And my kids, Henry and Izzy, I don't know if they're still out there, but they got used to teenagers coming over with fiddles and flutes in the, back, in the backyard. There's a lot of, oh, those guys again, eye rolls coming from Izzy and Henry. Yep. All right, I think we're at least in the ballpark of All in right. tune. So Perfect. We'll see how it we'll goes. We'll do our best. <clears throat>
guys. Um, so I'm going to sing one more song here before we take a little bit of a break. And this is probably, this is one of my favorite songs. I remember learning it as a, or hearing it being sung as a really little kid in Dahi's classes. And my mom used to sing it when she, she went to them. And it's got a, just a really awesome story to it with guns and pirates and <laughs> coming out. And it's, it's a really exciting story. Would you say it's rated R? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Father's Day tomorrow. <laughs> Brian Miller, everybody. Woo! Woo! Brian Miller is a connoisseur of dad jokes that he likes to Woo! distribute with, with wisdom when he, when he sees fit. <clears throat> But one of the things I got to do while I was in, in Limerick this spring was I actually got to teach. So one of the song, te the song teacher went on sabbatical and they needed somebody to fill in. And they gave me a call. And so along with doing my coursework and performing and stuff, I was the undergraduate song tutor at the university, which was a really, really wonderful experience. And I really enjoyed it. And teaching is one of my very, very favorite things to do. My grandparents are teachers. My parents are teachers. So I think, I don't know if it's Stockholm Syndrome teaching or just that I actually really love to do it. But it was, it was my favorite part about being away this, this fall, uh, or this spring, this year. And this is a song that I tortured many of my students with. I made them all sing it all the time. And it's now being sung in various different places. I had students from Estonia and from Germany and from the United States and Canada. So hopefully the, and now the song is, is everywhere and not just here in Minnesota and it's, it's the version is from Loud, if that means anything to anybody. So I'm going to have the wonderful Danny Diamond come up, and as well as Nora Rendell. Hey. And Cormac, my father, as well. Hey. Yes, and we will um, we'll take a break after this. Hope you enjoy. This is called Willie Taylor. Got to listen out for the story. Youthful lover, full of mirth and loyalty. They were going to the church to be married. He was pressed and sent to see. Dally diddly dum diddly dum 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 dum. Dally diddly dum diddly dum dum day. She dressed herself up like a sailor. On her breast she wore a star. Her beautiful fingers, long and slender, she gave them all just a smear of tar. Dally diddly dum diddly dum 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 dum. Dally diddly dum diddly dum dum day. Shut 
dilly dum dilly dum 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 I know if I don't come up here and get this moving, we'll all just stand here chatting all night. So uh, you can definitely tell that this is Adrian's first album because she hasn't made any attempt to sell it to you. So I'm going to be dad and I'm going to say you can get yourself an album. There is a QR code in various different places that you can buy it online if you wish, or you can buy your actual physical CD. But that is the purpose behind tonight, is that uh, she doesn't want to carry all of them home with her tonight. Neither do I. So um, we're, uh, as a family and as a community, we're just absolutely overwhelmed with the, uh, the response and the support for Ava and Carmen earlier on. Give them a round of applause. Um, they're uh, astonishing ladies. I've, as I said, I've, I've known each of them for, for over a decade, and I, I just think the world of them. And uh, I've known the other one a little bit longer. Um, so we're going to try and keep the evening moving. Again, if anyone has a, a seat by them, put your hand up and make sure we fill in. And, and I hope you're not sweating too badly. You would have been sweating more if we were outside. And I don't know if that rain ever came, but I'm glad we're in here anyway. We, I, I, the last two weeks I have taken to looking at the weather app far too many times per day. So now for the next few weeks, I'm not looking at it at all. So let's see if we can get the troops back up here. And when you see them, welcome them, okay? Thanks so much. about the green room and about spending lots and lots of time in this building from the time I was very small until now. So it's really, really a joy to be up here and to be singing for all of you. I've spent um, a good percent of my life right here in this building, listening to music or dancing. You're in the dance studio right now, so there's been lots of, lots of sweat, lots of crying, lots of, lots of yelling in this room. I teach in this room during the week, so it's, it's a very important place for me, for me to be. Never, Brian, never. So like my wonderful father mentioned what I have neglected to mention, I've been having so much fun that I forgot that I actually made CDs, <laughs> that I recorded an album and made a CD, and that I need you to buy it, <laughs> and it's out there. And I had a really, really wonderful time making it. It was obviously a learning curve for me doing this for the first time, but I had wonderful support around me. The wonderful Hannah Sween is somewhere in here, and she did the graphic design for it. <laughs> And it's, it's very beautiful, and I was really lucky. My, my best friend Delaney brought them to my house yesterday, and it was very, very special for me to get, get to open them and, and hold them in my hand. Um, so speaking of really, really wonderful friends, I'm going to sing a, a happy song. And this is um, it's a song that I learned when I was probably 13 years old. And soon after that, I took over singing and playing flute in Kicking It Irish as, kind of, as one of the band members, which was very new for... Um, 15-year-old me, and this was one of the songs that I chose to sing, and I've sung it pretty much every single year. It's one of my favorite things to sing, but it's a rare, very happy love song in the Irish tradition, and I just want to sing it. I know there's so many dance kids out here and so many like very, very dear friends from being, um, being a teenager in this room, so this is Ned of the Hill, and I'd like to sing it for all. <laughs> Oh, dark 
Here's the evening and silent the hour. Oh, who is that minstrel by yon shady bough? Whose harp is so tenderly touching with skin? Below your head, where the light fairies tread. If you will but wed with young Ned of the hill, young Ned of the hill has no castle or hall, no bowman or spearman to. But one little archer of exquisite skill has loosed a bright shaft for young Ned of the hill, and though it's hard to escape to this young lady's power, for high is her castle. very very much it's one of my favorite songs I learned that song and this next one from a really wonderful woman named Teresa Horgan who came and did a workshop here at the junction and I got to spend a great day with her at 13 probably before I was old enough to appreciate the time that somebody was giving me teaching me a song two songs like that where she, she kind of notated everything out for me and we sang it through um, but this song is I think it's really special because it talks about it's called The Bold Privateer, and it kind of talks about war, and it talks about like the effects on everyday people just kind of through a really simple conversation. And one of the things I wanted to do when I was picking songs for this album was to pick songs where kind of women had a voice, or women were represented in traditional narratives. Um, and I think I managed to do that in every song. Fingers crossed. Please check my work after. Give me a grade. Um, so I'm going to ask the wonderful Danny Diamond to come up and play this with me. Uh, Danny was kind of, he did all the recording, mixing, mastering, producing. He did all of the very heavy tech lifting that I do not understand how to do. And he made a really beautiful album out of it. And I'm really, really honored that he also played on it. And that he's, he's up there, up here and up here today. And also that he's in Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> So, Brian Miller, poor Brian Miller has to tune probably every five minutes here. And a lot of that is my fault, but I'm very, very, very happy he's up here. So, this is. I tune, I tune it for you. No, that was very nice, Brian. I'm going to blush. All right, this is the bold privateer. Brian Adams. <laughs> 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 
Sorry to bring him into this. I'm going to give Brian Miller a well-deserved break, and I'm going to ask my dad to come up on stage. <laughs> so um, this next song is one that I learned when I was 16 off of a recording of a man named Donald McGuire. And it was kind of one of the first times where I heard a recording of a very slow, unaccompanied, very long, traditional song, and I really kind of dug my teeth into it and I was really, really attached to it and I sat for it with it for a very long time. And I learned all of it. <clears throat> and I spent I spent too long with that very with that recording. And I did the same thing with a couple other recordings of Donna Maguire singing traditional songs. Um, and this spring I was really fortunate to get to go up to the Inishowen Peninsula to attend the Inishowen traditional singing weekend, along with Brian and Danny, who were there, so it was there was a Minnesota cohort up there, which was very special, and I talked about it a lot that weekend. But um, it was really special to be up there, and I was up there on a, a student kind of fund, and the very first night, I wasn't expecting it, I, I was called up to sing. So you have to stand in front of this many people, and it's a silent pub, and it's really, really hot, and you're sweating a lot, 
and you have to just stand there by yourself, nobody helping you, no accompaniment or anything, and you just have to sing. And so I did, and I sang a song that I had learned around a similar time that I, um, I had learned off a recording of Donald McGuire singing it. And it went all right, and I was so relieved, and I was so happy, and we went on to the next day. And it was at the end of a lecture, and this, this older gentleman came up to me, and he said, what was um, your source for that song you sang yesterday? Which is a really common question. I was like, oh, I learned it off a recording of, of Donald McGuire singing it with, with the loud mouths. And he was like, oh, there's no better source for that song. <laughs> Hi, I'm Donald McGuire. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a little speechless moment standing there in front of a man who was, in a very nerdy way, a, a hero of mine, and I had just sung his version of a song in front of him without knowing it. It went well. He spoke to me the rest of the weekend. So it was, it was, but it was a really, really special experience, and um, I really wanted to record this song and his version of this song specifically for this album. And so I'm going to sing it now for all of you, if you'll let me. And. I'm going to have my wonderful dad play a drone for me on the box. <clears throat> Now I must go. 
You were a very captive audience for a very long trad song. You did a very, very good job. <clears throat> I'm going to let Brian Miller w work his way through his instrument forest. And these are a set of tunes that I learned while I was away in Limerick. And I was really lucky, so I voice is my main instrument, but I kind of begged for flute time as much as I could. And um, this set of tunes um, I got off Luis Mulcahy. Uh, which is a wonderful flute player who's been here at the Celtic Junction for for Mim, and she was lucky and she was she was very lovely and she, she remembered me and we had a wonderful day just sitting playing tunes together. And this first tune is actually a tune that she wrote in honor of St. Bridget's Day, um, and it's it's just called St. Bridget's Day, <laughs> but it's um it, it's a really beautiful tune and I was so lucky to learn it from from the woman herself. And then the second tune, I don't remember the name of, but it's a beautiful jig. And I'm going to have the wonderful Brian Miller accompany me here on the most Irish of instruments, the bazooki. <laughs> if he's ready. <clears throat> Oh, 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 
if you guys watch me play instrument swap here on my little thing. So the next song we're going to sing is a song that Brian found on his... Brian has a wonderful blog of traditional songs, particularly songs from the North Woods area of the United States. This is true. This is true. And Canada. This is the way. And this is... Um, do you have anything to say about this song? Where you found it? Uh, yeah. Uh, so I think I found it from a great singer from the state of Maine named Carrie Grover. Ooh. And she was... She was an incredible woman who had all these wonderful songs. She actually played the fiddle. And uh, she, a lot of people don't know this, but she was, the, she was Paul Brady's source for Arthur McBride. So if you know that, that famous song in Irish music, that's, it actually came from a woman that was born in Nova Scotia and lived in the woods of Maine her whole life. So um, kind of cool. Yeah. But this one comes from her too. And uh, I showed, I think, maybe I showed Adrian the Carrie Grover, uh, scratchy old recording, but then it was also done more recently by uh, two great young singers, uh, Anna and Elizabeth, out on yeah. the East Coast. So this is a beautiful, I think more Appalachian version of, yeah, take on um, Black Eyed Susan. So that's what this is called. And Brian and I think that the beginning of this sounds like, this is for my family specifically, the song at the end of The Princess Bride. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mark Knopfler. <clears throat> so, listen out for that. That's a special way, cool, way cooler than Brian Adams, really. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Same era, though. <laughs> so, it's a black eyed season. Shall be thinking of it. Don't. I love his leg, a stone. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>
I'm gonna invite the wonderful Tahi Sproul back on stage to sing another song hey. with me, if you'll have me. And um, this song, it's, there are so, so many versions of it. There's a lot of versions of it in the United States. Bob Dylan used to sing a version of it. Um, there's versions in the Irish tradition. But I came to this song as a child on the floor of one of Tahi's song classes. Um, I used so to, many wires on there's so many wires, there's lots of wires up here. Um, I used to go to these classes with my wonderful mother, Natalie O'Shea. Is it the one? <laughs> and I would sit on the floor or sit next to her and I would draw on all of her song sheets and I would listen, listen to what was going on. And one day they, they were singing this song and I think I slowly, I got smaller and smaller and smaller and I think I ended up under the table and by the end I was I was in hysterics I was very very sad and I think I alarmed the class a little bit with my you alarmed me I was wondering I what's going class. on over there <laughs> but what I find found so sad about this song it's called the house carpenter and it's about a mom who leaves her baby and gets on a boat and then drowns at sea so I think I had good reason to be crying <laughs> personally and I was so distraught by this that my mother took the song and rewrote a happy ending to it. <laughs> my very own happy ending to it where she jumps off the ship and she goes home and all is well. And she stays with her, her baby. So this is, this is a very unique version of this song <laughs> because it's, it's mine and it's only recorded here and you're only going to hear it here and from me, the wonderful words of Natalie O'Shea. <laughs> This is called The House Carpenter, and I couldn't think of a more fitting person to accompany me. This is, I'm, I'm, a men, I'm making amends for causing such distress in his class <laughs> many years ago. So this is The House Carpenter. She put a lot of pressure on me because after that, each week after that, I was wondering, is there something incredibly depressing happening in this song? <laughs> and, and I put it, anyway. I was a litmus test of yeah. sorts. So, okay. It's all for the sake of thee I could have married a king's daughter fair I'm sure she'd have married me But I refused a rich crown of gold And it's all for the sake of thee Yes, it's all for the sake daughter fair I'm sure you are to blame for I am married to a house carpenter and I think he's a fine young man oh I think he's a fine young man I have six ships upon the sea the seventh one
She shone like some glittering crown Oh, she shone like some glittering crown They'd not been on board but just two hours the ship was nigh to leave Until this lady she began to weep And she wept most bitterly And she wept most bitterly Well, are you weeping for your house or your land? Or are you That you never shall see anymore No, I'm not weeping for my house or my land Nor am I weeping for my store But I am weeping for my pretty little babe That I never shall see anymore That I never shall see Her slippers bejeweled stepped up to the deck Her white feet stepped up to the prow And with a splash she swam to shore Her fine gown always sunk down Her fine gown always sunk down Farewell, farewell to all Men. Farewell to a queenly life You cannot take me from my pretty little babe For you see she is my life For you see she is my I'm going to invite my wonderful group of people back up on stage. Brian and Nora and Cormac are going to join me. I have one more song for you and then a set of tunes with all the wonderful musicians that have been up here. Um, so this song is actually, I'm going to end on a morbid note, but it's kind of fun. It's a really fun song. So I got this song from Helen Diamond, which is actually the wonderful Danny Diamond's sister. And she's a beautiful singer. And this is an old child ballad. So this is a collection of songs um, collected by a man, a man with the last name Child. Children weren't singing these. That is something I've had to clarify a lot in lessons over the last while. Um, but it was one of the first songs I heard Helen's unaccompanied, like really raw version of it. And something kind of sparked in my brain and it was the first one that I kind of brought to Brian and I said, could we turn this into an arrangement and an accompanied version. And I think it's probably my favorite track off the album. And it's the very first track, so hopefully you'll at least get that far in it before you decide not to listen to it anymore. <clears throat> but this is called Lady Diamond, for the diamonds. Woo! Um, it's, a, it's a little morbid, but it's, it's very fun. And I have the wonderful Nora singing harmonies with me, and my very own dad up here and the wonderful Brian Miller. So one more hand for these guys before we... And we'll have some other people up to play a final set of tunes for you all. So I hope you enjoy. Oh, there was a king and a very great king and a king of birth and fame. He had not a child in the world but one. Lady Diamond was her name. He had a very bonny kitchen boy, and William was his name. And he never lay out of Lady Diamond's bar till he brought her body to shame. When twenty weeks were past and gone, 
When an evening bird song and evening bells rung, no men were laid to rest. The king came into Lady Diamond's bar. He was an unwelcome guest. He drew the curtains round about, and there he sat him down. Rise up, rise up. Lady Diamond, he says, for I fear you grow too round. Was it a duke or was it a lord or a baron of high degree? Or was it sweet William, my bonny kitchen boy? Tell now the truth to me. It wasn't a duke and it wasn't a lord. Nor a baron of high degree, but it was sweet William, your bonny kitchen boy, whom I love most tenderly. Call to me, my merry men all, that I pay me ten fee, and bid them take out this kitchen boy and kill him. And Joe and Dan Joe might be gone. Anybody else who's here? Come up with so this is a set of tunes I wanted to leave you with and I wanted to have all my there's some of my favorite people in the world and I get to be on one stage with all of them at once. And it's it's just such a joy for me. I've had the best night up here. I forgot that I was supposed to be selling an album and I forgot that I was this was a lot of work and a lot of time in the making and it was just a lot of joy and really, really fun to get to be up here and to share with everybody. So this is a set of tunes that I got in Ireland and I'm very, very happy to be home. So I'm celebrating being home with these set of tunes. Um, it's Tommy Whelan's and the Merry Harriers. I have to remember, Nora is still my teacher in many ways. <laughs> and has to remind me how they start. Let's hear it for Adrienne O'Shea. <laughs>
a song that Nora used to sing a lot when I was a little kid called The Whis Whiskey Evening. And it was written, it was released the year that I was born. And I have lots and lots of memories of Nora singing it when I was really little. So grab a partner. If you can count to three, you can do a waltz. Or sing along, whichever, whichever suits you. It's a whiskey evening for sure. No, I'm not lost, not broken, not poor. Just this music and the spirit pure. It's a whiskey evening for sure. Well, this night falls heavy and strange, but I. sound of the gathering rain, in the sound of the gathering rain. It's a whiskey evening for sure. No, I'm not lost, not broken, not poor. Just this music and the spirit's cure. It's a whiskey evening for sure.